Welcome to Life Mastery for Women, where I help you decode the struggles in your life in the areas of health, wealth, relationships, and spirituality with mind mastery, emotional management, and meditation. Welcome to today's podcast. Hey ladies, it's Jen Mack, Lady of the Mind. Welcome to today's episode where I hope I am finding you motivated to take action in your lives. And if you're not motivated, then it is my intention to give you just one nugget of inspiration towards your transformation. This is meant to be motivational. I want to take you on a journey. I want to take you on a small ride to just help you to understand who you really are. When I start talking about this topic, I just get chills and I just feel immediately, I, I just know what I'm about to talk about with you. And I get chills, I have tears behind my eyes, and I just want to be real. Because, you know, when I feel this way, when I know this topic that I'm about to talk about, that I've been studying for some 20 years, and I'm about to share something with you, and I feel the way I do, it is like I'm about to give you the best, most powerful gift that any single person could receive. That's how I feel inside right now. And then the thing is, because I'm so tapped into my intuition, I know that it's the truth. That's, that's one beautiful thing about intuition. If you are listening to my podcast and you're paying attention to the things that are showing up in your life and you're working through that energy and you're working through those limiting beliefs and then you're standing back and going, you know, she's got to be right about something Like because I had this thought and here's this thing. I asked for help and here it showed up. I did this thing and this is what happened. And you start to kind of stand back and almost slow your life down so you can see truly what's going on. And you're paying attention to your intuition. You're going to recognize in you that this is the truth. And I want to take you on this journey where we go back in time before you were born. I want you to think, to try to fathom the before you were born part. I remember hearing uh, a speaker say these words and they were very powerful to me. When she said these words to me that were like, can you imagine your life before you became a physical being? Can you imagine never existing? And I'm like, okay, well, no. I mean, past lives? Like, what are you talking about? Knowing the infinite possibility. Like, if I ask you, can you imagine not existing? You would say, well, no, because we know this existence, right? No matter what you believe about pre, pre-birth or after death, no matter what you believe, that statement is really deep. That question is really deep. But I want to take you back there. There's something that I believe that is something like we had this spiritual agreement. We're coming into this planet. We're coming into this physical form onto this planet. And this is, this is what we chose. We chose to come in and have this experience, whatever that experience is. And you are birthed into this family. Like some people go as far as saying you were, you chose to be, you chose these parents, you chose these siblings, you chose this family, you chose this, this experience, this trauma even. And I do believe that to some degree. I think it gives me this grounding that makes me feel like there's bigger purpose on this planet, which then feeds my hope and feeds my my inspiration to do great things while I'm here. So wait a minute, are you telling me that there's like a map? Like I'm on this planet and there's a map and my job is to find my motivation and to find my passion and then to fulfill my dreams. I was born with these God-given talents, these skills, these talents, this desire, this passion that is beyond what I could even fathom back then when I was 14 years old and dealing with, you know, uh, adolescent drama in my life, right? Like, I'm a really good public speaker. I've seen videos of myself giving speeches and it's, even though I know what I'm talking about and that was me on stage, I would watch me. Like, I'm funny and I'm, like, I command the audience's attention and engagement and I love that in a speaker. And I have honed that skill and I create a safe space for people to show up so they can be authentic because I didn't have that. Growing up gay, I did not have a single safe space. Can you imagine hiding something like that to the people that are the closest to you? 
it was very draining to me. And I didn't feel safe to say to my mom until many, many years later that I'm not who you think I am. But I had to hide it for a lot of years. And I tapped into this other part of me, this bigger, greater part of me that helped me to feel safe when I didn't feel safe in the physical world. And I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know what was, what was, uh, I was becoming. Like I didn't know, I knew that there was something great. I knew there was a flame that was lit deep inside. I was meant for something bigger. I was meant for something greater. And I didn't know what it was, but I believed in it. And I believed that it was specific to me. And I knew that as I got older and I went through college and I went through all these experiences, I had all these jobs and met all these people and worked for these bosses and did all these things and tried to hone all these other skills that meant nothing to me. But I was really good at that too. And I'm like, okay, so what am I doing? What am I doing on this planet? Well, my spirit is expanding. My spirit is constantly seeking expansion. And in that expansion, it is pushing my physical body to different limits if I'm willing to go. Listen, if you are faced with some challenge, a relationship, your health, some spiritual growth, uh, money, finances, your career, something that is standing in front of you that is basically beating your head in and you're not going, this is when pain returns to the body. This right here, my friends, is when your growth is imperative to your spirit getting what it wants. My spirit came came into this physical form through this body that I'm walking around in to experience a certain thing. And that certain thing is what starts to show up in my life that's like, I have to be on stage. I have to have an outlet to share this knowledge that I keep reading about and learning about. I have to share this truth with the world. I am a communicator and I have to communicate the truth to people. I have to inspire people to take action in their lives. I have to inspire women to move when it's time to move. I have to inspire people that when their spirit is seeking expansion, that I am here to create the safe space for you to go. For you to be yourself, to be in front of me without judgment, with total and utter acceptance. So you can go. Because it took me forever, what certainly felt like forever, to move to make choices, to make changes, to move in my life, like years and years and years to leave the stupid, uh, unhealthy relationship. The four-year relationship that should have lasted a weekend, I didn't leave that relationship until years later, living in this pain and in this, this massive struggle. Because why? Because I was afraid to move. I didn't have emotional support. I didn't have a safe place to go, to talk to somebody, to be myself. So I'm constantly struggling with my identity and I'm letting this relationship create that identity. And it was a person that I did not like. And then as I'm creating this fake identity, it took me forever to find who I truly am. And I'm going to ask you to do the same thing, to get quiet, to get centered, to get grounded and to ask yourself, who am I? Who am I? And I knew that I wanted to be a woman that I respected because I was in this relationship and I did not respect myself. I told you those were the darkest days. You want to you wanna hear about dark times? You go back to season one, episode nine, and it is like living in my darkest moments. I did not like myself. I didn't like who I became. I was suicidal. I was thinking there is no place for me on this planet that this is not the person that I want to become. And I let this person dictate who I was in the relationship. And it was not a person that I was in alignment with that my spirit was trying to get to show up. And as I'm standing here on the brink of disaster, self-disaster, that I'm like, what am I doing? Why am I in this relationship? 
Why am I letting this person completely destroy my integrity, my hope, my, uh, my honesty in myself that I'm like telling people that this is such a great relationship and it totally wasn't? It was the worst relationship I was ever in. But I'm asking you, if you look in the mirror, if you stand and look at your whole body, your whole physical body, but look yourself right in the eye, you're wearing glasses, take your glasses off, get close enough, look yourself right in the eye and ask yourself, who am I? Are you a person who's impatient? Are you a person who lies and cheats and steals? Are you a person with or without integrity? Are you a woman who makes bold decisions or not? Are you a woman who sits back and lets other people make decisions for you or dictate who you are as a woman, as a human, as a wife, as a sister, as a daughter? Who are you? And this will be some of the most eye-opening conversation that you have with yourself. I remember at one of the breakups, because <laughs> we had several, one of the breakups, I remember crying my absolute face off, feeling completely miserable. I hadn't eaten in like two days and high metabolism and highly active. I was in bed for two days. Don't open the curtains. Don't talk to me. Don't answer the phone. I don't want to see anybody. I don't want to talk to anybody. I felt like I was just living death. And I remember crying my absolute face off and looking in the mirror and going, what are you doing? What are you doing? Looking at my hazel speckled eyes <laughs> in the mirror, red face, sunken, like sunken cheeks. I like, I swear I lost like 10 pounds in this two days, burning nothing, just miserable, absolutely miserable, heartbroken and loss of identity. I remember thinking one thing that I did not feel comfortable in my own skin. When you are so far removed from your spiritual path, you are not in alignment with who you are spiritually. You don't feel comfortable in your own skin because your spirit is like left the building, even though that's not really something that can happen. But if you are so far removed from your spiritual identity, and that was me, if you get to such a dark moment in time, but what do we do? You look at yourself in the mirror and you say, who am I? Or you say, what am I doing? There is something very powerful about that that motivates you to move at like lightning speed. It is very, it's very empowering. I, I remember looking and going, what are you doing? And in that moment, I remember hearing the words, leave. Now, we were not living together at this time. We were going through a breakup and uh, I won't go into all the details, but it was just the stupid, horrific thing. And, um, and the details don't really matter, but I was at the very, 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 very low end of, I was very, very low, very low, that I was thinking so much of taking my own life. And we didn't live together. And I remember asking myself in the mirror, crying my face off and just like, what are you doing? That was my spirit asking me. That was not my physical being. My physical being wanted this relationship to work out. My physical being wanted this love and this trust and this honest relationship, wanted this healthy connection with somebody that I could call my best friend. Well, what this person was doing was nowhere near anybody that you would call a friend. Nowhere near it. And I remember my spirit asking me that. What are you doing? And I remember hearing, leave. And of course I didn't. I think I, I, not kidding you guys, I think I lasted two more years in this stupid relationship. And leave. And I think that was my spirit trying to save my life. And I just didn't go. Now, obviously, I didn't commit suicide, but I will tell you that I did attempt it twice. And obviously, it didn't work. But I, there was a part of me that's like, you, you sort of have to withhold. You sort of have to get through this whole thing. You sort of have to ride the whole tidal wave. It's more like a tsunami. Ride the whole tsunami all the way to the end because then, then you will have your boundaries put in stone. And I do. I have self-respect. Now, it took me a while, and there was other couple of relationships in there. It took me a while to get through the whole thing. But I will tell you, I never sunk so low again. 
that now I am in alignment with my spirit. You have a spiritual being. You have a spiritual energy that's inside you. That's everywhere. You take it with you and it, it, inter, it intermingles with other spirits and other spiritual energy out and about when you leave the house. When you go out, you hang out with your friends and or your family, you're intermingling with this other spiritual energy. What a beautiful thing. But you have to sit back and say things like, what am I doing? That's going to help you to align with your spiritual, your spiritual energy. What am I doing? I'm doing great things. I'm building trust. I'm building self-confidence and self-respect. I am learning to be a woman of integrity. I'm going to do what I say I'm going to do. I'm, I'm learning to love instead of hate. I'm learning to enjoy life instead of riding this complaint wave. You start to get these really big answers. And then you ask, who am I? And that, to me, was a really joyous conversation to have. When I looked myself in the mirror some several years later, who am I is a really deep question. Because you can describe... Like, I'm a woman of integrity, I'm happy, I'm healthy, I'm strong, I'm fit, uh, I'm a mom, I'm an aunt, I'm, you know, a sister, I'm a daughter. You know, it's like, those are these descriptor words, but there's a deeper sensation in there when you ask that question that just goes way, way deep. And I suggest that you even stop the podcast for a second, pull out a mirror, look yourself in the eye and say that. And that to you right now will connect you to your spiritual being. So now what? Okay, so now I'm connected. Now what do I do? What, what, what does this even mean to me, Jen? Why, why, are you, why am I connecting to my spirit? Who cares? I just let my spirit do whatever it's going to do and it's going to be great and my spirit can just be there and I'll just be here and it'll be amazing. Well, you have to be able to tap in. It's kind of like you're driving someone someplace. You're in the driver's seat. That's the free will, right? And anybody who's from any religion, you know that there's this thing called free will. And it's, it's exciting and then it's frustrating at the same time because you kind of wish that your spirit would speak up if you're going in the wrong direction, right? And so this free will allows you to basically steer the car in any direction you want. You want to drive off a cliff. You want to drive up and down this hill. You want to turn around and go back. You want to sit in the driveway and not go anywhere. You can do all of those things. Your spirit, however, is like Miss Daisy in the back seat. You're going too fast. You're supposed to take a left. You got to get here. You're going to make us late. You're, you know, you didn't stop completely at that stop sign. I mean, you're hearing all of these things in the background. Now, that's if you actually have the divider open, you know, like in the limousine where they have the dark, the dark divider between the first seat, you know, the driver's seat and the, and the passenger seats. So if you have the driver's, the, the divider open and you can actually hear your spirit, you're going to hear some amazing things. You're meant for greatness. Choose joy over pain. Let this go. Leave that relationship. Leave that job. Something better is out there for you. You're going to hear let go often, especially if you're someone like me who like really hangs on to things forever and ever. Let it go. Be willing to release the stuck energy that of us hanging on to things, harboring things that clog up our garden hose. <laughs> let it go. It's okay. You're going to survive this. You're going to move on from this. You are meant for happiness. You are meant for joy. You are meant for abundance. You are meant for great things. No matter what it is you're doing, you're meant to have great experiences. And yes, you're meant for challenges because those challenges help you to grow. It's in those challenges that we become better people. Just like What's the one quote? I don't know who said it, and maybe you'll know. And add it to the comments if you do remember or do know who said it. But great sailors were not built or created. Great sailors were not created on calm seas. We become great people through adversity and challenge. We become great parents when our kids tell us no when we say it's time for bed. That's where we pull up those skills. If we all had great kids that just said, yes, mom, and yes, dad, we, wouldn't, we would just, we don't really have, we're not really great parents. We're just parents. But we become great parents through adversity. 
and you're like, oh, really? Did you really just say that? Because that sucks. We become great at managing our finances when we understand when we don't have money in our pockets. We become great at working when we can problem solve and, and be flexible with the things around us. But it's through that adversity. So, so welcome the inver- adversity and then go to work. Try to connect with your spirit. Connect with your spirit and say, okay, I see this challenge in front of me. So here, let me tell you, let me tell you something. So I come into this world. I'm 12 years old. I'm standing on our shed. I've told the story several times in my podcast, but I'm standing on the shed. My mom's inside. She's having a hard time. She's paying bills. She's having a hard time. We didn't have any money. We're on food stamps and lived on welfare forever and a day. My dad, my dad was around. I mean, he didn't live in the same city, so I visited with him, but, um, he was not really helping, you know, through like helping my mom with finances and stuff. And, um, I go outside and I'm standing outside and I'm, I'm, I didn't realize I was doing this, but practicing with air quotes, practicing speeching, speeching. Oh my gosh. Speaking. (laughs) Sorry. But I was practicing my speech. Now I don't have a speech. I was not a public speaker as a kid. Don't get me wrong. But so I'm standing on the shed and it's just a flat top shed. It's surrounded by corn. And the corn is, you know, probably over my head as a 12 year old. And I'm pacing back and forth on the shed. I don't know even know, I couldn't even tell you what I was even talking about. But I remember thinking, my mom's inside, she's struggling with finance, she's paying bills, she's having a hard time, she's in a bad mood, I'm outside. And I remember thinking, there's got to be a better way. I remember thinking that. And in the same feeling inside, I'm thinking, I'm meant for something great. I want to change things. I want to make money as, as an adult. And I want to have a lot of it because I want to create great things. I want to create a women's retreat center. I want to create safe space in this great business that, that helps other people. Now, I had no idea what it was. And I was not into business when I was younger. This, didn't, this just kind of lit the flame. And then fast forward to where I'm at right now, 49 years old. I have a very small coaching practice right now. I have this podcast, which I absolutely love. And I have a couple of Facebook groups with some people in it, but I don't really know what I'm doing. I don't really know how to build this business. I just know that I want to help and I want to build communities and I want these women to have a safe space to go. And that's what I'm creating. It's very small scale. The other day, it's probably a week ago now, I was having a really, really hard time and I'm thinking about quitting. Why am I doing this? The things that I want are not coming fast enough and I really want to create this thing and I need some help. I need some help. And so now I'm faced with you know, living kind of a, this day in, in a bad mood and, you know, wanting to go take an angry nap and I'm just really unhappy and, and I'm really kind of down in the dumps and I'm not feeling very optimistic. And, and as I'm crying into my pillow, trying to build this business, I just want to help more people. I just want to, you know, really ramp this up. and I want to offer more things. And I just don't really know how. I don't know how to go from where I'm at to uh, this higher viewpoint that I'm trying to get to. And as I'm meditating, quieting my mind, but I'm really feeling frustrated and I quiet my mind and I think, I just want some help. I want my spirit to show up and point me in this direction. And at the same time, I want some answers, right? So I'm in this meditation and I'm quieting my mind, I'm tapping in intuitively and I don't really get anything. And I, and I understand that if it doesn't show up right in a, this very second, that just relax, it'll show up. It'll show up in the next couple of days. And sure enough, I don't know if it, I don't think it was that night, but the next night or something, I get this, um, see this video on my newsfeed on Facebook. And it's this girl, I've never met her. I don't know who she is. And she's a, um, she's a coach and she's a business consultant or business coach. And she does this coaching program that helps coaches build their their business, whether an individual one-on-one coach or a group coaching program. I'm like, oh, I want to start a group coaching program and do like women's retreats and events. And that's exactly what she does. So I I sign up for her webinar and I listen to her webinar and I really connect with her and I really connect with the things that she's saying. I'm really kind of excited. And then I listen to this, the following webinar, we had to fill out this application to get kind of, uh, to get accepted to listen to this other webinar that was like five days later. And I listened to this other webinar and I'm just falling more and more in love with this program and the idea. And this is exactly the part and the piece that I'm missing. So I'm really enjoying this. I'm really enjoying like speaking with her and I send her a message and she responds and 
I send her more messages and we're going back and forth and we're communicating and we're talking and, you know, she asked me some questions to try to get some clarification about who I am and where I'm at with my business and where I want to go. And then I look at the price of her program and I sit back and I'm like, man, how do I know? How do I know if this is the right program for me? How do I know that this is the right step? Like how, how come I don't feel completely connected? How come I don't feel com- like 100% yes? If I'm not 100% yes, then I'm either right at the moment, I'm a no or I'm a not yet, but I'm not usually a maybe, but kind of a no. And so I'm like, okay, what do I need to do? So I came downstairs on the treadmill and I'm kind of sorting this out and I'm thinking about it. I'm talking to Amy about it. I'm like, okay, her program's kind of expensive. What am I going to do? Do we have the money? Can we do this right now? Is it a good idea? You know, I have bought programs in the past that were similar in price, but I'm like, ah, when I didn't really get the results that I wanted from those other programs, I don't want to make the same mistake. Well, the question There's a couple of questions. One, within, like, what is it about the mistake that is going to rock my world? Well, I don't want to have now this debt without having this result that she's talking about. I don't want to have this debt. Okay, well, what is debt? To me, debt is weight. It it creates this heaviness in my energy. Okay, so how about I try working on clearing that? Okay, so I get into this meditative state and I start working on clearing that and I, I accept this I accept this debt. This is business debt. When you go into business, you have to you have expenses, you have things that 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 are the the business has to pay for in order to whether it's me and, and um getting a getting some clarification, getting some education, getting some assistance in areas that are not quite my strong suit. And then I think this is like paying for my education. I'm going to invest in myself. I've been doing that for years and years and years. I read a ton of books. I take a lot of online courses. Why is this one any different? Maybe in the price that am I saying that I'm not worth it? So I stand back and I'm like, okay, so if I stand back and I look at this thing and my spirit says, you asked for help and I put this in front of you. Huh? That is what I asked for, wasn't it? So now I ask you, if you are asking for something, if you are, no matter what the something is, whether it's the emotional piece, like I want to feel joy in my place of work. I want the love to come back into our relationship. I want to feel good in my body. All of these are vital goals and desires. But then I ask, if you're not getting it, you're asking for it, but you're not getting it. Then I ask you, why aren't you moving? Why aren't you taking the steps? I sat on that Wednesday. I had a terrible day. And I sat on that Wednesday and I wanted to get specific results. I was asking for help. And then this showed up in my face. This coach that I really like, I like what she's offering. I like what she's saying. It is the missing piece in my business that can really help me to create this group coaching business that I just absolutely love and creating the lifestyle that I want. Then I think, well, why am I not going? Do I not believe it? Do I not believe that I can go? And even right as I'm recording this, I'm not 100% a yes yet. And I want to be 100% yes before I say yes. Otherwise, I'm a no. So I'm going to continue to clear some energy, but I'm going to ask you when you are, when you have a choice in front of you, which we always do, no matter where you are in your life, standing on the brink of change is where we almost always are. Every single woman I have, or any client I have ever talked to, every single time they are on the brink of change. I have, I I don't know that I've ever met anybody that's like, no, I'm pretty good. My life is pretty good. Sometimes that means that they've settled. Sometimes that means that, yeah, I'm mediocre, but if I look at specific things and, oh, yeah, I can see where I, yeah, I, I want more time in my business, like I'm spending too much time, or I want more time with my family, or I want, you know, less time at work, or I want more money, or I want my relationship to be deeper, whatever. But there's always something. So when I ask you if you're standing here and you're like, okay, yeah, 
I, I want a better relationship. I want better health. And then I say, why aren't you going? It's right in front of you. Why aren't you stepping into what is preventing you? It's our beliefs that we can have it. It's our beliefs in ourselves. It's, it's our beliefs that it can work for me. It's our belief that is this going to get me the results that I want? If we are in alignment, those decisions become easy. How do we get into alignment? Meditation, grounding, bringing your energy in, pushing it down into Mother Earth, asking for the support, journaling, praying, working with spiritual items that allow you to get quiet and to turn off your mind, turn off your mental energy and get into the the energetic space, that spiritual space, no matter what you have to do to get there. And so I'm going to do the same thing. I did a couple of techniques or um, taught a couple of techniques in my podcast, the I'm in, I'm out. And I'm going to do that as it relates to this. And I'm going to suggest that you do that too. If you're on the brink of change and it is, you have a choice to make or you have a decision to make is to physically stand up, stand in a spot where you have room to move uh, in front of you and behind you. And you put the decision out in front of you and it could be where if wherever I'm standing is a neutral place and going forward is the making of the change. So like for me with this example with this coaching program is I would physically step forward and say, I am taking this job. I'm sorry. I am taking, I am signing up for this program. I am paying for this program and then feel how you feel and then step back into neutral and then you can step back again that says, I am not doing this program, or I am not taking this job, or I am not going to lose weight, or I am whatever, whatever your decision is. Step back to neutral. Just breathe, just feel, just kind of get your body neutral. Step forward again that says, I am doing blah, blah, blah. Feel how you feel. Now, I would rather take this program because I'm at, so my mind wants to do this because I'm ready to level up my business. I'm ready to create this business that helps a ton of people. A ton of women become empowered and make bold decisions in their life. But why am I not physically a yes? So to me, if my mind wants to go there, I asked for help. Here's this help. I feel like this program is what I want it to be. Why am I not going? I think it's because I need to clear some things. So I'm going to do the same thing and I'm going to encourage you to do the same thing, to to enlighten yourself about what what you need to do energetically to become a yes to you, your spirit moving on. If I say yes to this, what's the worst that's going to happen? Well, I'm going to pay a boatload of money, but what if I succeed? What if this builds my program? What if this really launches and allows me to help more people? Because right now, my business is not big enough that I'm not happy. (laughs) I want it to be bigger. I want to be giving more and I want to be sharing more tools and myself and building communities and helping women to merge together in an area and a community of support. So I'm not happy because it's not big enough. Not saying that I'm not happy about who's in my community. I absolutely love the ladies that are in my community. I absolutely love it. And I love the bonds that are being built. And I love the camaraderie that is being shared and the support that we have for one another. Absolutely love it. I'm in love with my clients right now. But I want it to be bigger. So I'm going to encourage you to do the same thing. I hope that this motivated you. I might have been a little all over the place. But I hope that as I'm sharing my story with you of my struggles, my own personal struggles, because I'm always going to be growing. I might be in a different place than you, but I'm always going to be growing. I'm always going to be expanding. And I understand that every time I find a challenge, there's a solution. And then I find, and then I'm just, there's going to be another challenge. I'm going to be 82 years old, still in this business, still going strong. And I'm going to be facing another challenge. We have to just understand that that is life. Our, our spirit is always seeking expansion, always. And as it expands, we're always going to be faced with challenges, problems, adversity, always. It's just like if my spirit set out to be a sailor, 
We're not just going to go out to the island and dock and be there. We might be there for a little while and you relax into it and you understand and it's great and it feels good. And then boom, you hit another ceiling. Man, here we are again. But you under, if you understand this process of life, then you're not so deflated when it shows up. When the challenge shows up, you're like, oh yeah, here, here it picks up the wind again. Or now we got snow or now we got ice or there's a, I don't know, a, a sea of sharks. We got some problem and then it just makes us better women in the face of adversity. And I don't know about you, but I want to become everything to myself. <laughs> that sounds ridiculous, but I'm like, I want to become that true person, that true woman of integrity that just can move every time there's adversity. Is it frustrating sometimes? Yes, 100% of the time it can be frustrating. But I want to be able to stand back and go, okay, here's another challenge. What am I going to do to face it, to climb over this, to climb, to go under, to, to go around? What am I going to do? What support do I need? What um, information do I need? What skills do I need to implement? Because at the end of my days, I want to look back at my life and go, my biggest struggle was this, and I overcame it. My biggest struggle back then in my 20s was this crappy relationship that I was in that I thought I was just going to freaking die from, but I overcame it. And now I'm in my late 40s, almost 50 years old, be 50 in September, just a few months away, and I have a beautiful relationship that I've had for 11 years. And I have a beautiful family that I couldn't even comprehend or create even in my own mind. How absolutely amazing and close and tight-knit our family unit is. Because I was able to show up and create that. Do we have struggles? Yes, of course we do. Do I lose my patience? Yes, all the time. Do we have arguments? Of course. But do we love each other straight to the core? of our being? Absolutely. And I wouldn't change it for the world. And that's important to me. And I hope that your life and your goals and your desires are important enough to you to ask those tough questions of who am I and what am I doing? What am I doing? They're such great, powerful questions. And then if you're faced with this challenge, do I'm in, I'm out. Because energetically, you will feel if you are in alignment with where you're going or not. And if things need to be cleared. Because right now, I'm not, I'm not 100% yes, but I'm not 100% no. Which tells me that there's energetically something's got to move in order for me to, to understand this. And that's the work I'm going to do as soon as I hit stop on this podcast. I hope this motivates you. And if you need more support and motivation, please join us in Lady Rising. Go to Facebook, type in Lady Rising, come in through the membership, answer the questions, tell me you're coming in through the podcast. And I can't wait to meet you, hear your story, and help you to succeed in these areas of your life. If you liked this episode and you look forward to future episodes and are really looking for a community to help support you with implementing the tools that we're talking about in this podcast, please consider joining our online sister community called Lady Rising on Facebook, where we focus on that spiritual support and connection, just like in today's episode. I hope you'll join us. Go to Facebook, type in Lady Rising, and tell me you came in through the podcast.